State Capitol in Hartford, and we're going to round out this edition of Meet the Leaders with State Representative Sean Williams. He is a Republican from Watertown, representing the towns of Watertown and Woodbury, I believe. Yes, sir. Rick, Sean, good to have you with us. Uh, we have a lot to talk about, so we'll jump right in. First of all, the budget. Uh, there are as many opinions on the budget as there are legislators under this roof today, I believe. Sure. And uh, let's, uh, I believe you voted against it along party lines, as most legislators did this time. I, I did, and you know, Jeff, it doesn't make me pleased to be voting no on the budget, but uh, I, I had no choice. This is not a budget that's good for taxpayers. Uh, for all the talk in this building of the budget being structurally sound and changing the way that we do business, this is more like uh, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, as the old Who song goes. It's, it's one of those things where you look at the structural deficiencies that we've built into the budget and we are setting up our state for future disaster. We are undoubtedly going to have deficits in the next year and in the next biennium, meaning the next two-year budget. Um, so we didn't fix anything. We just patched it up and said, let's deal with the problems later. This is your 10th legislative session it under is. this roof as a Republican from Watertown. Was this the most worrisome year for you financially? You know, every year uh, we, we tend to say, oh, this was the worst year ever. Just like kids always say, oh, this is the best Christmas ever. You know, I actually think this was the worst year ever because, again, for all the rhetoric and all the talk from, uh, you know, Democrats in the legislature and the Malloy administration of how this was going to be different, we were going to do things differently. We didn't do things differently. We're still borrowing. We're still putting money on our state's credit card to pay for our everyday expenses. We're still using one-time revenues. They tried to auction off the state's electricity customers to help plug uh, uh, the budget deficit, and AARP and other groups were very much against that. So, you know, this was no different than it was before. It was just a different kind of gimmick that they proposed. And so, uh, yeah, it really was, I think, the most worrisome, because in my first couple of years here, we had a lot of surpluses. Now we're running deficits year after year after year with no end in sight. One of the things you wanted to touch on as well in the last few minutes we have here, campaign finance reform. What needed to be done? What was done? Well, you know, first of all, given what we did, we should have just left everything alone. Nothing would have been better than what we did. We changed and rolled back our campaign finance laws so that uh, you can have almost unlimited donations to state political parties, and those state political parties in turn can turn around and give almost unlimited donations to certain candidates for public office like governor and, and other races. And this campaign finance fund, is it funded by taxpayer money? Well, so legislative races, state house and state senate races, continue to be funded with taxpayer money. Um, but what, basically what we did is we took away a lot of the uh, restrictions that we placed in the law a few years ago. We, if you walked up to the second floor of this building in 2005, you would have seen these so-called good government groups like Common Cause and other groups out there lobbying to ban contractors and lobbyists and nasty special interests from giving money to uh, state legislative candidates and other elected uh, candidates running for public office. Um, the other day, we basically tore that entire structure down and didn't hear a peep from those very same good government people. So we have reintroduced uh, special interest money back into the fold, um, just as it was before when those good government groups thought that everybody was corrupt here in this building. Um, they were rather silent on this bill uh, in, in the last couple of months, um, as, or actually the last couple of weeks, because it only came up recently. And we're almost taking like 10 steps back to where we were before we passed those reforms. One issue, uh, driver's licenses for immigrants, regardless of legal status, that's also been a hot button issue this session. Where do you stand on that? Well, I, I voted against it. I mean, first of all, uh, you know, there's some people that make the argument that illegal immigrants are already driving, are already driving around in cars, and therefore it might as well give them a, a legal driver's license. No one that I know of is going to insure them as a result of this law. Maybe they'll get insurance on their, on their own in some other way, but it's not going to happen as a result of this law. Um, I think we're further legitimizing illegal activity by providing a government document, government ID to these uh, individuals. I think, by the way, um, you know, this is the land of opportunity. Everybody who wants to come here and succeed should come here and succeed, but do it in the right way. And I think we should create a better mechanism to do that rather than just handing out a driver's license to anybody who asks for it. Now, some of your colleagues say, well, let's enforce the laws already on the books having to do with that. Would you agree? Oh, I, absolutely. And I think that applies to many different issues, whether it's that or gun control or whatever else. I mean, more laws is not going to create greater protection for people. I think it erodes freedoms and it erodes liberties. I think it was the wrong thing to do here. Well, your 10th legislative session, uh, fire still in the belly? You still love it? Somehow I do. I don't know how. but uh, Let's talk about I, that. I, what, do you, what keeps you coming back? 
you know, I got to tell you something. I love the issues. I love a good fight. Um, I love a good debate. I love working with people on the other side of the aisle on issues that we find agreement on. I love fighting with them on issues that, that we don't have agreement on. Um, I, look, if you're a Republican in Connecticut, you have no choice but to get along with Democrats. That doesn't mean that you have to compromise your, your values. That means you have to figure out a way to work together and carve out those issues that you agree on and try to make some consensus and, and fight on those that you don't. And I, I love the fight.